Hi, I'm Dan, and today I'm going to be speaking to you about the relocation process, including obtaining your COS, applying for your Tier 2 visa, and pre-employment checks with the hospitals that you're working for. Okay, so once you've signed your offer letter from your hospital, uh, they'll require you to go through various pre-employment checks. Um, there'll be a series of documents that you need to send over to your hospital. Now, each hospital will have a different list of documents that they require. Everyone's quite unique in terms of their HR departments. But generally speaking, you're going to need your passport, a copy of that. Uh, you're going to need references from your employers covering the last three years. You're going to need your international police checks covering the last 10 years. You're going to need certificates of good standing from any medical bodies that you've worked uh, under during the last five years. Uh, and you may be required to fill out some forms from the hospital, uh, things like uh, new starter packs and um, occupational health uh, clearances. You'll do your full occupational health once you actually arrive in the country. Uh, you'll be booked in so if there's any, any blood samples that need to be taken, uh, they can be taken on arrival. Okay, so once your hospital have received all of the documentation that you've sent over to them, the next thing that they'll do is make an application for a Certificate of Sponsorship, or COS. Uh, the hospital will make the application to the Home Office for a COS, which will cover your job, your position, uh, and once they've received that back, they will assign your passport details to it so that you can go on to make your application for a Tier 2 visa. Um, this stage of the process, can sometimes be delayed. Um, that's never anything to be alarmed about. It's just that some HR departments like to wait until they've got maybe 10, 15 uh, COSs that all need to be assigned and they'll do it at the same time. So don't be alarmed if it can take a week or two for this to come back, that's quite normal. So once your COS has been assigned to you by the hospital, uh, you'll then be able to go on to make your tier two visa application um, at this stage you will need several documents. The application itself is made on the Home Office website, however, um, you'll need to ensure that you've got one year certificate of sponsorship of course. Um, part two of that is to check that it does have maintenance ticked or otherwise that you can prove that you have uh, the relevant amount in your bank account at the right time. Um, make sure you've got your proof of English knowledge as well. Uh, not everyone, if you've gone through the OET route, it may, may not be relevant to you for the Tier 2 uh, application, so make sure you've either got UK VI IELTS or alternatively uh, you've got a NARIC certificate that supports that you've got the relevant uh, English language skills. Um, you also need your passport, of course, uh, and your police clearance certificates in order to make your uh, Tier 2 visa application. Okay, so once you've made your visa application, um, you will be invited to attend an appointment with the visa office. Um, at that appointment, if all goes well, they will hold on to your passport and send it back to you in the post, usually about two to three weeks later. It does depend on process and times, depending on the country that you're in. Um, once you receive that passport back, if everything's gone to plan, it will have a vignette visa in there, um, which has a travel date um, in which uh, essentially you can enter the UK within a month of that travel date. So once you've got that set, you can then fly over to the UK uh, and the next stage is to arrive here and pick up your BRP, your biometric residence permit. So if all has gone to plan, which I really, really hope it does, um, at this point you'll have arrived in the country, uh, you'll have picked up your biometric residence permit, uh, and the first thing to do really is usually to attend a HR appointment at your hospital. Uh, they'll advise you on exactly what you need to do next. There may be things like occupational health checks, there may be some trust inductions that you need to do, uh, and bits of orientation and things like that. But otherwise, um, usually within a week or two of arriving in the country, you will have actually physically started working in the relevant department. Um, and yeah, you'll be good to go. So we wish you the best of luck with your journey to the UK. Um, I hope this has been helpful in teaching you a little bit about relocation support. And if you have any other questions or if you're a doctor that's currently looking to work in the UK, please do get in touch and we'll be happy to help.